Text, Chafee College, Home Edition, Wignall Museum of Contemporary Art. Artist Talk William Camargo, February 25, 2021 from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us at today's program featuring artist William Camargo, presented as part of the Wignall Museum's Home Edition, a series of curated artist talks, workshops, and discussions featuring artists and cultural workers. My name is Rebecca Trawick, pronouns she, her, hers, and I'm the director and curator of the Wignall Museum. The Wignall Museum is a teaching museum and interdisciplinary art space that introduces Chafee College students, faculty, staff, and community members to innovative contemporary art objects and ideas. By fostering critical thinking, visual literacy, discourse, and empathy, the museum seeks to enhance the intellectual and cultural life of our community. We want to take a moment to recognize that we are situated on the Ranch Cucamonga campus of Chafee College, which resides on the traditional and unceded lands of the Tongva people. We offer our recognition and respect to the elders, both past, present, and future. And hello, my name is Roman Stallenwerk. I'm assistant curator at the Wigmall Museum of Contemporary Art. All sessions of Home Edition will be recorded. When possible, recordings will be made available on our website. Please visit us at www.chafee.edu slash Wignall to access our full schedule of programs and available recordings. An announcement will post our email subscribers and social media when new videos are available. All recordings on our site include captions and audio descriptions as options. Thank you. And hi everyone, my name is Andy Hadel. I'm the preparator at the museum. Along with Rebecca and Roman, I'll be assisting with today's Zoom session. Let me share a quick breakdown of today's program. In a moment, William will present for about a half an hour or longer um, with the remaining time available for Q&A. So today we're delighted to introduce you to William Camargo. Camargo is a photo-based artist, educator, and arts advocate who lives and works in Anaheim, California. He received his MFA at Claremont Graduate University and his BFA at the California State University Fullerton. His work has been featured at venues such as Chicago Cultural Center, Loisaida Center, University of Indianapolis, and the Cooper Gallery of African and African American Arts at Harvard University. He was awarded residencies at the Artist Cooperative Residency and Exhibitions, ACRE, the Chicago Art Artist Coalition, Project Art, Otis School of Art and Design's LA Summer Program, and he was the recipient of the 2020 Len Scratch Student Prize. Most recently, he was included in Vanity Fair's inaugural Silver List. He is currently the artist in residence at the Latinx Project at NYU. He serves as Commissioner of Heritage and Culture for the city of Anaheim, and he is founder and curator of Latinx Diaspora Archives. Camargo's 2020 exhibition, Origins and Displacements, Volume 1 and 2, organized by CSUF Begovich Gallery, in partnership with CSUF Grand Central Art Center and Museum, Museum of Cultural, uh, excuse me, Museo, Museum and Cultural Center was presented to much acclaim. Currently his work can be seen in Negotiated Frontiers at the Latinx Project at NYU. The virtual exhibition will be on view through April 30th and I highly recommend it to all of you. So please join me in giving a warm virtual welcome to William Camargo. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for having me today. Um, also, just want to make a quick uh, land acknowledgement um, where I'm currently at. at it is uh, Tomba and uh, Ashamin land. Um, and I think that's that's a lot where a lot of my work started from looking at um, histories uh, who occupy spaces. Um, you know, we are the borrowers of, of this space. And um, there's still a lot of uh, indigenous folks out here that I think, um, uh, you know, don't really get recognized or we think um, you know they've moved away uh, but that's that's a little bit of uh, my work uh, that I do in the community is, is trying to uh, bring that history and those counter narratives in front um, and talk about the erasure that that happens with history. And I am a photo based art uh, artist a community archivist and an uh, advocate and an educator um, I think those are all uh, somewhat important to, to think about how we can kind of uh, create these kind of archives and kind of kind of narratives and you know always kind of think about the canon um, in photography and in all these spaces the archives as well home movie stills I like to start off with this because it's a reminder of, of 
uh, of home, uh, which is still home. And I have been uh, lucky enough to be back and, and create uh, work uh, about home. Uh, you know, this was a uh, home uh, movie on VHS that was archived by XM Collective, who is still um, uh, archiving movies of the Latinx diaspora um, in Southern California. Uh, if you look them up on, on uh, Google or uh, Instagram, uh, you know, they're taking, um, you're able to digitize your, your home movie collection. Uh, they'll give you a copy. Uh, and as long as they can keep uh, one copy in their collection, um, it costs nothing, right? And I think that's, uh, you know, that's partly due to the community collective that they want to, you know, they don't want to charge folks um, to uh, keep these histories alive. Um, but still left of me is a, um, a movie still from my, I believe it was my fourth of the yeah, fourth birthday um, in Anaheim, California. Uh, you know, I think uh, when people think of Anaheim, California, they think of, of, of course, Disneyland. Um, but I didn't recognize it as that. I recognized it as a, as a close-knit uh, community. Um, I had about, I would say, at least over 30 family members that lived in, in this kind of mile or mile and a half radius. Um, you know, sadly, there's only two families left in Anaheim, California, and, and the rest have kind of um, been priced out, et cetera. And, and I think, um, you know, the 90s was, a, was this kind of another, another wave of, of activism and, and as, as well in, in Southern California, right? We think about uh, the riots in 92. Um, and this was quintessential kind of Southern California upbringing in, in brown communities. Um, you know, you see to the right, that's my cousin, um, what one would call, uh, quote unquote, like Cholo. Um, you know, that was something that was super close to me. I grew up in, in that culture. Um, and, and also, you know, there's those histories that don't get told um, of that culture. Um, and, you know, to the left is, is you wouldn't never see like a, a police officer come by uh, the neighborhood unless something else was happening. Um, you know, and I think we all kind of related to each other. Uh, we asked for help. Our neighbors were helping us. Um, it, it was a stop also for, for family members that migrated to the U.S. Uh, to make a pit stop at our home or my aunt's homes and kind of, you know, go on to other cities that, uh, that they were going to um, work at. School photos. You know, thinking about my own history, I, I thought about everyone that, that had stepped in Anaheim, um, that possibly left their mark in, um, you know, in the city's history. Um, you know, I came back after a stint in uh, living in Chicago, and you know, the, one of the first things I did was always look at my family history, like my family photographs. Um, I realized that I had family here that that was here earlier than the than the seventies, than you know, than that I was told about, um, and also. You know, some of the history that I did find about the city of Anaheim, uh, about, you know, the racist policies that they had, uh, the segregation, was all through this alternative weekly newspaper called uh, the OC Weekly, uh, which Sally is now a defunct uh, uh, newspaper. And, you know, kind of taken out from that point, I thought about there must be some kind of documents um, that told me this information that made this, this history valid. Uh, because right, the the people that hold the knowledge that hold valid uh, valid knowledge, in, in especially in academic spaces, were mostly white males. And I think um, when I was looking at, at when I was you know in school and grad school, uh, learning from uh, black feminist scholars, um, you know their struggle was having to validate their knowledge, um, having to show proof that you know these histories did exist. Um, so right, working twice as hard to, to definitely say we are here, like we are still here and, and we're still gonna be here. Um, and I was lucky enough to find some, some images. Uh, this is a elementary uh, school. It's an all Mexican school uh, that, is, um, that doesn't exist anymore, but I think it still has a, you know, that neighborhood that, that was uh, in this area was a lot of the, the orange um, grove workers and, and, and 
the the folks that packed the oranges all lived in that in that neighborhood, and it was made specifically for them, right? Um, you know, it, it's not ironic that this neighborhood, that the school, is still um, the the land that occupies the space now, is also still predominantly uh, Mexican American, uh, Brown, or Central American. Um, you know, it's it's not. I don't think it's a coincidence, and I think history. We definitely have to think about history as a way to kind of um, to bring forth, but also to kind of restructure, deconstruct it, um, to include a lot of you know what we have to say in our histories. Um, you know, I'm thinking about you know burning uh, burning the master's house and and rebuilding it uh, from those ashes, uh, and and thinking about like liberation for for our um, our communities car wash for the homie. Um, and, you know, when I was in an undergrad at Cal State Fullerton, I uh, thought about, um, you know, the going to uh, other places to document, to do my projects and realizing that, um, you know, there's, there were stories to be told in my backyard. Um, you know, my professor, uh, who's still at Cal State Fullerton, Julie Orser, you know, re- pushed me to think about, you know, what is, what is there, what is still there, what, are, you know, what are you kind of like ignoring in, um, when you're making work. Um, and when I did proc- procrastinate a lot of the times in, in community college or an undergrad, I, I would turn my lens into to my family because they were uh, readily available. Um, it was an intergenerational uh, household, uh, of course, and I think, um, you know, not thinking that they were kind of Right, these stories were also valid uh, to be told, um, especially when thinking about academia, not really seeing um, a lot of uh, black and brown uh, imagery um, from communities that I, you know, that I would love to see that, right? I found out about Daywat Bay later on, um, uh, you know, not really kind of um, seeing them in, in slideshows when I was looking at in my photography classes. You know, that project that I did in, in undergrad, um, was able to come out and, and be published years later. Um, you know, this is, you know, I, f- I was doing that project in uh, 2011, 2012, and then five years later, um, you know, Anaheim was again on the spot, uh, spotlight, but it wasn't, you know, because of this, and it was actually because of the low wages that Disneyland did, um, did give to employees. You know, a lot of my friends, I uh, worked there. Um, I never really worked. I never worked there. Actually, you know, when I was a senior, I would always tell myself, like, I don't think I like I don't want to work in Disneyland. I think, um, you know, I think I was already conscious of, of what, I, you know, the separation between the community and Disneyland was. Um, and of course, be- between the, you know, the, the 2012 shootings that, that were really close to, uh, really affected me and, and really kind of, um, led me to think about the history of the city um, and, and that separation uh, between uh, those two, uh, you know, Disneyland and the community. Prison tats. A, a lot of, like, you know, I work in, in kind of like bodies of work, um, but they're all somehow like, um, you know, interconnected. And I think, um, you know, when, while I'm making work, I would just Google stuff. I would just kind of, you know, surf the web and, um, and this was like when I was rethinking of when I looked at you know those images from my home uh, movies, and I realized, and I saw these you know that these tattoos that my cousins did have, um, and then again looking at media, looking at what they were like kind of portraying uh, uh, black and brown folks um, in those in those spaces, right? We we see the kind of uh, this connection between media and and how they portray folks. Um, these kind of stereotypes that still exist. Uh, so I found this website that um, supposedly um, sells uh, tattoos and sends their makeup artists uh, to um, to Hollywood film sets um, and create these um, personas of folks. Um, and they literally have a tab um, that has prison tats on them. Um, and realizing too that I have these quote unquote prison tats and, and a lot of my family does. And um, But this is this projection that that was given to these things, right? Taped on tats. And this is what, you know, these kind of two images are about, um, right? And I, I, I wanted to kind of um, 
make it a, a bit comedic as well. Um, I think, you know, I found friends that, um, uh, yeah, that to the right is Jonah, right? I was, uh, you know, he only has like, I think two tats and I think, and then my friend on the left has, has none, right? And I think uh, this double temporality of, of things that I, you know, when we think about like, you know, the things I was reading in academia, like, you know, Simulacra and, and Plato's Cave, this kind of double temporality. And, and um, you know, I, I also wanted to kind of little poke fun of it, but use it uh, to, uh, you know, to, in my work is this kind of, um, you know, temporary tattoos and then making temporary again with using tape. Um, and, and I guess, again, you know, thinking that, um, we hold these projections uh, to black and brown folks um, and the connection with, with the prison industrial complex. Um, knowing so many folks in, in my family have been in and out of prison. Um, you know, a, a cousin of mine just recently um, was out after 13 years and in, in, uh, being incarcerated. I um, mean, what that does to, um, you know, to our family, uh, the things that that we have to deal with outside. Um, and knowing that some of the first things that I, that do happen uh, when, um, you know, police were coming into my community is lifting up the shirts or, lift, or you know, looking at, at, at the bodies of, of these uh, of black and brown folks um, and seeing that there were some, these tattoos that they can kind of connect with, uh, um, you know, with the neighborhood gang, et cetera. Um, no. And along with that too, I, I realized that there was, um, you know, these super personal ideas of, of, of who I was and, um, you know, not realizing afterwards that there was these um, ideas of beauty uh, that were kind of even being thrown around in Latinx communities. I think there's still this, um, you know, I still think that, the, you know, Latinx, Hispanic, still tries to kind of center a, a bit of whiteness uh, in, in communities. And, um, you know, knowing that I, I went to a 98% uh, Latinx high school, you know, there were still these, these uh, issues of colorism, of, um, you know, anti-Blackness and uh, anti-Indigenous uh, uh, notions, right? And, um, you know, my connection with, um, with my Indigenous community is, has disappeared because of, of, you know, colonization, but, as well as, as that kind of robbing of um, of identity, um, and this is one thing you know that I would do uh, growing up because uh, you know I wanted a smaller nose, I wanted uh, less indigenous features, um, and a simple gesture you know kind of portrayed that you know that, and you know I've, I've been finding folks, um, friends of mine that had these kind of similar issues, um, and this is kind of a, a friend of mine uh, being able to uh, let me photograph this. Um, you know, that gesture of trying to get rid of uh, this indigenous nose that are, you know, and, and I think it's, it's cross-cultural, right? There's, um, there's a lot of, uh, of these issues that continue to uh, plague our communities. Um, and we, we're seeing it every day now. And then recently, um, you know, when I started grad school, I think uh, thinking about grad school, I, you have to kind of think about your thesis show from right from the beginning. Um, Holds a sign in a park. And... You know, learning and, and kind of being in institutions for several years now, right? Community college, undergrad, and, and grad school. Um, you know, I still want to take some of those kind of contemporary uh, structures and, and use them um, in spaces like my own. Um, again, using archives, but also, uh, you know, responding to those archives. Um, and, and this sign is series is, um, you know, hopefully, I think in, in a couple of years, uh, Origins and Displacements will be a, a, a book um, and thinking that the signage series um, is are going to be chapters of, of, of that. Um, and I think, you know, seeing these, these signs, um, I think about the, the work of Lara Aguilar, her, um, her series on access, you know, um, having those same issues that, that she was talking about. Um, how she can get access to, um, you know, museums um, and seeing how that has kind of left, um, left her and, and, you know, sadly she passed away a couple of years so she wasn't able to see some of these 
uh, successes that she has, right? Like her, her solo exhibition, um, uh, being uh, traveling across the country. Um, and, is, and I think it is because of, of these economical issues that, that we deal with in photography is uh, she's not getting her due uh, while she was alive. You know, she was, she's getting it afterwards. Um, and, and, you know, one, one point I always make it is showing her work um, with to my students and, and also uh, introducing folks uh, to other photographers that they might not see on, on you know, through their academic career. Sunkist. Right, so see, these are some of the like, you know, images that I did find that I'm, I'm responding to. Um, you know, that the archives are there. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, privileged enough to have an education to be able to access some of these things, right? I think uh, archives are, are sometimes inaccessible to community um, unless we, we think about how we, um, Think about putting these, uh, you know, these archives in, in public spaces, uh, which is something that I, I I'm thinking about um, as soon as you know we're able to kind of uh, be outside and and kind of convert conversate about uh, issues of these is as a commissioner is is being able to um, bring forth projects that that are in cooperation with community, um, you know, not not being a someone coming into community and thinking that we can. Um, we know what they what the community wants. Uh, even myself, that I do come from a community, you know, there's still that kind of uh, um, relationship building that you need to have. And this kind of I, I put this back to the that first image is uh, that states uh, this um, this park used to be segregated um, because in, in those days in the 20s, um, this park, which is now Pearson Park in Anaheim. Um, you know, I wasn't sure what side of the park was segregated and, and knowing that um, finding this image in, from the 20s uh, of this uh, uh, brown baby in this area that I, I do know where it's at, thinking that maybe this side was the only side that um, uh, Black, Brown, and Indigenous folks were able to, um, to be at. Um, I think, uh, you know, I think it was a huge, uh, a huge finding for myself to think about, oh, the side where I used to practice soccer was the side that I, I wouldn't be able to go. Um, you know, back then, and making those connections, right? I think archives and and moments in histories um, when not put to the forefront and and kind of have to deal with it is there's some kind of interconnection that happens with um, with events, um, you know, that we're seeing uh, today. A market, um, and you know, I, I kept continuing uh, to uh, still think about how to document a community. Um, Along with the, the project, you know, I, I, I was um, doing these kind of performance documentation of my performances uh, with the Sinai series, uh, but I still love, you know, documenting the beauty of my community um, and thinking about also like who I, I was seeing at that time in, in undergrad. Uh, you know, Stephen Shore is, is one that I always see in, in, um, in, in you know, slideshows of, of uh, contemporary landscape photography um, and, and just in general, like contemporary photography. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, his work is, is great. And I think um, I'm using these tools that I've learned um, and kind of uh, project myself into this, this canon. And I think there's been a lot of uh, talk with, you know, friends of mine of what, what, what to think about when we think about the canon. Um, should we just kind of insert ourselves or should we kind of rebuild it from, from the ground up? Um, and I think, I think that's one way to think about, um, you know, how to teach uh, these uh, artists uh, such as Ansel Adams, Edward Weston, and, and think about them more critically, right? When we think about Ansel Adams and his, um, his imagery of, of, of nature, you know, I'm thinking about like Manifest Destiny. City Hall. And, you know, when thinking about like what kind of um, you know work should we be uh, introducing um, in 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 kind of academic spaces or even just right? I mean, I still want to teach and I still want to uh, to open up space for uh, um, for other photographers that look at me um, that don't really see themselves in, in in the archive or in the 
you know, in the canon, um, right? And this is this is again like thinking about the masses' houses, like you know, and this is a great book. Um, if you know, want to take a screenshot of it, it's it's um, it's ha asking those questions um, and what we can do uh, to think about uh, as you know, as the camera was used as a violent um, tool uh, for oppression uh, for uh, communities of color, uh, especially. Uh, uh, black communities. Damn, four of them got elected. And again, you know, thinking, um, you know, this image was made um, and thinking how possible it was that, you know, four climate members were elected to the city council and how 10 out of the 12 uh, police officers during that time were also official members of the KKK. And it took me back to uh, another moment in, in Anaheim history in 2016 when there was a um, a uh, KKK, a small KKK rally uh, in Pearson Park, in that same park, which was segregated uh, in 2016. Um, and what's it now? 2016, yeah, I believe so. Um, you know, I, I didn't see it as a coincidence. I saw it as a, a reflection of our history, of our um, continued like legacy of white supremacy. Um, and you know, I think the way I problem solve uh, some of these issues is, is making work out of it. Um, you know, I am still continuing this work of, of um, connecting these past moments in history to contemporary moments now. Um, you know, why is it that we still have seg uh, like de facto segregation uh, in our schools? Um, you know, it's not, a, I don't think it's a coincidence. It, it's, a, it's a tool of, of white supremacy that allows this, uh, these things to happen. And you know, I kept just documenting and thinking about these kind of banal moments too in, in my neighborhood. Um, you know, the kind of resourcefulness that our community does have. Bullet and board. You know, like I I, I document with a, a medium form of camera, a pretty hefty one, um, so that it's not me kind of like parachuting in into community. Um, you know, I used to be a photojournalist, and I think uh, you know that was always a concern of mine of. of um, make having to make the work, but also, uh, again, being in cooperation with them, not, you know, just coming into a new neighborhood um, and, you know, being there for five minutes and, and then taking off. Obviously, I think photojournalism with the, the rise of the internet made it a bit harder because we wanted that news fast and we wanted, um, we wanted to see context so, so fast that those mistakes were made. Um, and I think, now being able to kind of concentrate and in, in a work more uh, that I allow myself to to actually, um, you know, be in community and and additionally, like I'm not just an artist. I also do uh, some work in the community with mutual aid uh, with the school district. The backyard haircut. You know, more like I would say, eighty percent of the time I'm without my camera, um, and again, keeping you know documenting my own family. Uh, this is. Uh, during the pandemic, you know, we're still in the pandemic. Um, it's my brother taking, um, giving my dad a haircut. Um, all the barber shops are closed, and and I think that's still a, uh, you know, these moments that we should we should really uh, look back at and um, and think about that. You know, our community was it was the one that was helping us out during this time. You all forget who worked here. Um, and you know, this image. Um, at the museum had a little bit of a um, kind of, um, you know, the board of the, the museum was talking about this because I think, uh, you know, now the packing house is, is kind of, um, you know, I, I, I don't go to it much anymore. Um, I think they're trying to think about what, how do you think about a historic place that definitely a lot of, uh, Brown and Native folks uh, work there and, and think about how um, it's now like, you know, I would say like now like the Grand Central Market in, in LA, it's, it's been like gentrified and I think, um, you know, what it was before as a place for, you know, um, folks that, that maybe didn't have enough money to buy a whole space, uh, were able to kind of rent out a, a location there. Um, you know, I don't think um, many folks from the community um, in Anaheim really go to this to this area anymore. Um, but then again, like thinking that 
you know, this was leased for very cheap. Um, and, you know, thinking of like, could have been leased for a, maybe a community center, a space that, that definitely serves uh, the people. Anita. Um, again, this is just kind of the continuation of, of you know, doing portraits, doing landscape, along with, um, you know, the signage series as well to kind of give a face to a little bit of, uh, of who I'm talking to, uh, talking about now. Chikonex still life number five, Araceli and her chicken she ate later. You know, I think I also like to play around with titles. I sometimes have different titles for, and I, if something just comes up and, and I think about it later on, because um, when I did first take this picture, um, I think two months later, she told me that they, uh, that her father, uh, I mean, it was, it was meant to be eaten. Uh, and that later on, that kind of like full cycle. Uh, and in some neighborhoods, I think, especially in LA, you'll see, you know, chickens running around the neighborhood. It's, um, you know, I'm thinking of, that's how my family was um, feeding themselves. And in, in before they migrated, it was uh, mostly, um, from the land, uh, you know, they raise their own food, um, and that that changed in Mexico uh, with uh, the NAFTA um, trade agreement in '94, um, and how it's so difficult now to kind of, um, and even in in, in Mexico to uh, kind of eat from your own uh, land. A hand with a gun tattoo. Photo title: This is not a gun, fam. You know, again, I'm always thinking about photography as a co -op, like cooperation with community, um, especially the the way I work differently than um, you know than my counterparts and and that we look at in, in photographic history. Um, and even though this is like a older essay from the mid '90s, I think it still does a lot with how a lot of uh, you know my friends work and and. You know, we think about, you know, I'll just read it out loud. It's like, what does it mean to have or indeed to be with an image of oneself? And how is that image constructed? How is that image controlled? To have an image implies the rights of ownership. To be with an image implies a relationship, cooperation, community. Um, and I think about, you know, archives as well with this. It's like uh, me running that that Instagram. It's like, I don't, I don't declare that I have um, ownership of any of these photographs. Um, if there's a community member that wants me to definitely show one particular image and they give me five, then I'll show that one. It, it's it's having, you know, I don't have control of that, you know, that's the community's control. Um, and I think it's a kind of, we're seeing this wave of like digital um, archivism and, and Instagram. Um, and, and again, we're trying to change the narrative, right? We think about the black archives, we think about uh, veteranas y ducas, um, you know, it's a different way of, of collecting these, uh, sometimes these like ephemeral um, uh, moments of, of community, right? From, you know, I'm thinking of Quisinera archives as well. Um, it, it's so different than, than, you know, and I don't, like, I don't have a degree in, in, in archiving, um, but I think it's, it's a different way of, of looking at how, um, how students do collect work, uh, collect family photographs, collect other other objects, um, and also this wave of like um, Native American folks asking for their um, um, all their right their items that they uh, that these museums own. A young man runs in a photo. Yeah, I mean, I, hopefully someone wants to give me that degree. <laughs> um, and I'll end it with uh, this image. Um, which is one of the newer series that I've, I've been doing. Um, and I'm uh, just making sure that I, uh, my knee is, is back uh, so I can run again. Um, but, uh, you know, a different version of this image um, got me in a little fight on Instagram. Um, and I never thought, you know, John DeVola was actually going to see this work. Um, and, I, you know, this is, you know, this work kind of, I, I wanted to share, like, I was so angry with what happened with Ahmaud Arbery, which, you know, a couple of days ago was just at the one year anniversary of a, of a shooting um, and how, you know, there's still these kind of negotiations that we have to do uh, as, as black and brown people. 
uh, and, and I think uh, queer folks as well, <clears throat> with how we can kind of move around uh, in a space, in a space that, you know, again, 90, 95%, you know, Mexican American neighborhood. Um, and I really thought about that image, those images of, of police cameras and, and people running away from, from police, right? And I saw that it was so, uh, uncanny to see that work, to see those images and to see the work of John DeVoe that I had seen from, you know, from even from high school that when I took one class and then from community college on until now, right? Uh, if you're taking a photo class in California, in Southern California, like you, you, you're not going to be, a, you're not going to be able to not see his work. <clears throat> and that kind of, um, <clears throat> You know, I, I know like his work is not about, you know, his, you know, it, it's about process. It's about, you know, these kind of um, contemporary notions of, of uh, I wouldn't say nothingness, but, you know, process and et cetera. Um, but as, as being a brown person in these spaces, I, you know, for me, it was, it was way different. Like, right, not only did, did sometimes cops would try to chase me to think, to talk about or to kind of turn my cousins, but also just running away from other quote unquote cholos or, or folks that, you know, wanted to mess around with me. Um, you know, I made this work and I thought about, again, the canon and how we can, how it, it is a, this kind of dangerous tool as well for, you know, when we're looking at that because his work didn't really, you know, there was no worry about, you know, about his, his you know, his white body um, running in, the, in these deserts. Um, and of course, right, I wanted to do this in a neighborhood that, again, you know, it's my own, uh, that I grew up in, um, that I thought about this, and I thought about the alleys, the different parkways that, um, and also this, you know, I think later on, a car was um, at the end of the alley, was was like yelling at me, thinking he's like, um, that I was running away from someone, right, these, these things that you don't see in the photograph. Um, and you know, I think um, you know, I think about these um, these relationships with space and and um, our bodies as well, and how we have to um, kind of navigate them because they're still, even though it's a predominantly brown community, it's, it's still kind of um, you know decided who gets to live, who, who not, uh, not from the community, but from those who kind of compose um, these issues, these ideas. Rebecca Trey Wake. Great, thank you, William. So um, a reminder to all of you, please do include your questions in the chat. And we already have quite a few. If you don't mind, um, perhaps Andy and I could just read them for the recording as yeah, we yeah. go. Okay. Um, first, there's actually, since we ended on the Devola, after Devola piece, um, Kat has a comment. Um, Kat says, I was disappointed yet not surprised to see such a reaction from a prominent figure like Devola wished he took more time to appreciate your intentions. So I wanted to share that. Uh, let's see here. So Linda has a great question. Um, was it difficult finding resources to create and distribute your artwork after graduating? Do you have any recommendations for someone with low income on what they can do to pursue digital and film photography? I've relied on uh, my school's darkroom to print and develop my work, but no longer have access to that resource. And of course, with everything going virtual, you know, there's a lot of people in that position. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, I'm hoping, I would always say like, you know, I, I'm always telling folks, younger folks and, and folks that, um, you know, look at me, I am a resource. And I think, you know, I'm available to anyone that that really kind of wants to get in there and 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 I don't have a, a doctor myself I just scan my work um uh, but I can definitely point you know point to to that direction and um you know there's there's few of us around but I think we're we're able to um really want to help out um I see that uh, Virginia Arce is here um I don't know when the Irvine space is opening up again to you know to the public for the dark room um uh, but there is, I think, um, some spaces that you can still go and, and you know, develop your work, um, you know, but I, I've gone to more, you know, just scanning my film, because uh, I still work all in film. Um, but finding those folks that, that maybe um, 
have had some success and reaching out to them. Um, hopefully their, their heads haven't gotten big enough to be able to actually even have a conversation with uh, students and, and folks who just graduated. Um, you know, I look up at my mentors to, you know, for, you know, the semi emails just check up on me. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to TA for um, Ken Gonzalez Day, which, you know, his work is, you know, his, his longest project on, on uh, erased lynchings have, has been a, a great inspiration to my work too. Um, you know, I TA'd for him for two years and, and he's, he's, you know, he's been amazing in, you know, response to my texts, you know, and, and I know he's sometimes busy, but he, you know, he makes himself available. And I think, um, you know, finding folks like that uh, is a really great asset. And, you know, you'll be surprised, like if, if you like someone's work, reach out to them. And I think, you know, hopefully they can respond. Um, but, you know, there's, you can find community on Instagram too, on, on these kind of digital platforms. Um, you know, there's a space on Facebook, it's like photographers of color. Uh, there's diversify photo, which is a great space that I, um, I joined early on. Um, and these things don't cost either. So I think, um, you know, there's always questions that you can ask in those forums and, and, and folks will reach out. Uh, yeah, and, and I mean, it's, it is, you know, film is quite costly. I, I definitely agree with that. And I think, um, you know, use your student ID still. If you graduate, I still use it and get that student discount. I don't think anyone from like, um, what do you call it? Um, freestyles here, right? <laughs> Consider using your iPhone if you have one too, right? <laughs> Cameras aren't bad. Yeah. So, so Virginia did add that you know that they'll be opening soon, like when when it's safe, and and they do have a very uh, affordable darkroom. You know, it's uh, black and white, uh, wet darkroom processing stations, um, and that the techs are great there too. So. Excellent. So Stephen has a question. Uh, which of your works do you think was deemed the most controversial by the general public or critics? And how do you defend your art to those who don't understand it? Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about like, who am I making this work for? Uh, I, I think if, you know, obviously it's also too like, you know, there's some folks that will never like my work. And I, I don't think I, I want to hold that grudge against them or try to make work that is somehow gonna um, gonna make make it like it, right? Because I think there's always this kind of internal issues that if folks don't like my work, because it's it's centering, uh, you know, the quote unquote the other. Like sometimes we learn in school, right? There was that chapter um, I remember in, in undergrad. It's like the other, which was like black photographers, native uh, photographers, women photographers. Um, you know, I think. Um, I don't think it should be kind of, it wasn't a big kind of, uh, you know, I wasn't upset that people did, didn't like my work. I mean, the John DeVolo stuff was like something that, that was kind of spoken about a lot. Um, and I mean, there was a couple of folks, but I really enjoyed, like, you know, the great support that other photographers, um, you know, when I did have a talk with uh, Paul Sapuya, who I, 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 you know, had a conversation with a couple months ago you know, was a great uh, supporter of the work. And I think, um, you know, I was fine with that. It wasn't, you know, I thought that John, uh, you know, John DeVolo and I would have a great conversation about this work uh, and, and you know, um, I, don't, I don't really like to, you know, like, you know, I don't say like, if, if I have to defend my art, um, you know, I think that's that's an issue with with them. I don't, you know, I don't think, or I don't want to make anyone like show my work, and if they don't like it, like, you know, that's fine. There's there's other spaces that I can do. Um, and all I think it's it's definitely just a collaboration with the community that I'm making the work about. Um, and if I don't exploit that, like, you know, I don't don't want to exploit folks for you know for an image. Um, Andy. Rebecca has a bunch of great questions in the chat, um, but I had one. I, I hope we didn't, um, our time limit didn't cut your presentation off too short. I, 
I was kind of hoping maybe if you would talk about, um, you know, as you continue <coughs> practice um, with Latinx histories and perspectives, um, you know, kind of what's what's next for you? What are you what are you looking forward to? Yeah, like um, like I mentioned to y'all before, I, I, you know, sadly I wasn't able to have a, a, a in person exhibition at the Latinx project, um, and and that's a, a great space that um, that is so, you know that's not too not too not too old, and I think it's a couple of years new. Um, that I think it's like everyone should be following to see what, you know what's next in Latinx art. Um, and so I'm working on a at a uh, on a catalog of of that exhibition um, that I think hopefully will be out in April. Um, and then a, a long-term book um, about um, origins and displacements in I think late 2022. Um, but again, I'm you know hoping once we kind of go back to a somewhat normal is is continue this coll uh, collaboration with my own like community, right? Um, I I've been um, quote unquote promoted as co-chair of a of that com of that commission, um, and we're currently working on on the public arts uh, plan. Um, and you know, one one of my concerns is is how this plan is definitely going to have input from community, uh, from youth, uh, from our, uh, our elders that that live here, um, and because we want to see you know, we want to see equity in the arts and in, in, in my own you know in Anaheim. I, I never found out about the amazing murals of Emilio Vasquez um, that I would see every day because it's it's you know there's a mural right next to this park that I grew up on and I never knew who you know who who um, painted it what was the story about you know and then the pride that 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 work showed about you know being brown um, I think uh, that's owed to the community and to the youth that you know that are going to be the future of, of the city um, and, and I think it's you know it's a universal process to um, you know I think I, I see that um, being something that uh, many artists, you know, can work together on, on achieving. It's really remarkable, uh, William, that you have this position as commissioner and you're able to actually continue <laughs> the work of your practice in this really, you know, sort of governmental public policy way. We, that's very cool. How did that, how did you get that? How did that happen? The good thing is like, I don't really have contact with the the council members because they they wouldn't like me <laughs> but um it was through uh the only well i think he's like one of two uh democratic um council members in in, in my district uh jose moreno who's a chicano um chicano studies professor at cal state long beach uh you know he appointed me and then i had to get approved um and i think you know he realized what I was doing, you know, I was working uh, with youth and community in Chicago in the, in the years I was there. Um, and I really saw, you know, Chicago as this place where, you know, there was this collaboration with, with the arts and, and the arts were very uh, um, liberatory to, to youth. Um, you know, I saw the powerful things that, um, that it was done with there, you know, I was I was working with um, with folks in in you know Cook County uh, jails as well, or folks that had just been released um, in youth uh, there too. And um, I think um, you know I wanted to bring that here too. Um, you know, thinking about my own community and how I was um, you know went through public school. Uh, I wanted to give that kind of opportunity for for folks uh, to to learn about this, and and public art is a, one way to do it. I think um, um, as a, I mean, I think art as an act of liberation is is something that kind of I'm trying to kind of convey to uh, you know, it, not everyone agrees with me in 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 city politics because I I didn't ever attend to be in a position like this. Um, um, but I think they can ha have to get used to me. Um, the first meeting I was there was, um, you know, they thought I was a youth commissioner. Um, they, you know, again, you know, I come in with like these tattoos on my fingers on, you know, everywhere. And, and you know, I think, you know, they never had seen someone like um, in a space like that. And um, I think it's, um, 
but you know things have to change and i think things and they they realize that that you know in a city that's like 54 percent latinx and it's just kind of diversifying overall uh you know they have to kind of step aside and, and uh, let us do some work in the city well that's great um so this is sort of a related question and we may not really have time to like fully answer it but i just i i thought it was interesting that you talk about you know, mutual aid and working in cooperation is obviously really critical to you and your practice and your philosophy. Can you talk about how you approach, um, you know, working in that in that way in communities? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I've been lucky to like work from home or work uh, in my studio. And I think, um, you know, I, I teach and I bring in folks to like these conversations. Like I, you know, I, um, you know, there's people that, that are definitely been affected by the pandemic. Um, but in, in, especially in Orange County, it's been Santa Ana and, and Anaheim. And I think, um, you know, with, with this privilege I do have to have, uh, to reach out to folks, to donate, um, you know, we've been partnering with like local nonprofits or nonprofits that um, to help out with like, uh, you know, food sovereignty and, and um, food insecurity. Um, you know, I, I think, not until a couple of times, like, I mean, most folks in the community don't really know I'm a, I'm a photographer or an artist. Mm -hmm. And then we just have these common daily conversations. They like, they ask me what I do. And, um, and then they ask me like, oh yeah, like take a picture of us. Right. And I think, um, you know, because that's, I put that aside for a bit. Right. I, uh, obviously my experiences um, are always connected to my practice and, you know, sometimes I do see something and then I come back to it and, and photograph it. But it just kind of showing up um, uh, as a hand, as a body to uh, to be able to have um, be able to give these resources to folks that um, that have had um, you know things happen to them in these communities. Um, you know, like we've been doing a lot of um, kind of like pop up grocery markets uh, where we just kind of make bags of groceries and hand it out to the community. Um, I think uh, every Every CD, the IE has great mutual aid. Uh, you know, uh, Black Lives Matter ID um, has like monthly um, or weekly uh, food distributions. It's like, you know, if you're lucky to not, you know, be over six, 65 or have or not be uh, immune compromises, um, give them a hand and, and, you know, help them out. But don't do it, you know, don't do it to feel good. Just, you know, do it to um, to serve the community. Um, you know, and we we always kind of relay back to you know the Black Panther Party of of uh, feeding the community and and um, educating them um, as well, uh, political education as well too. Andy. Um, well, one uh, question that we like to ask all of the home edition guests is: um, Are there any artists that you would like to, you know, promote or <clears throat> uh, suggest for our audience? Yeah, you know, definitely. There's there's quite a bit. Um, I'll do one great one because I think um, um, it's a good friend of mine too. Her name's uh, Irene Antonia Reese. Uh, she's a, an amazing uh, a photographer uh, out of Houston um, who deals with you know family histories as well, but also with this kind of um, idea of, of being black and Mexican and and um, like again, you know, talking about like sometimes the, the anti-blackness there is in, in Latinx communities and how that kind of um, affects, um, you know, Afro-Latinx folks as well. Um, yeah, no, she's she's amazing. I think, um, you know, there'll be some shows. Um, I was lucky enough to be in a show with her in in uh, in San Antonio. Uh, this was like right when the pandemic hit, so I was about to buy my ticket to go see it, and we we're gonna have all this. Yeah, it was an amazing show. Um, but um, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's her, her work. Um, again, like Paul Sapuya, uh, I think everyone, like a lot of folks may know his work. Um, um, I mean, it just like, you have to see it. It's just, it's, it's amazing. Um, well, we can't thank you enough for your time and energy um, today. It's really been wonderful to hear about your process and trajectory and experience as a working artist. So huge thanks to you, William. And thanks to all of all of you who were able to attend and spend a little bit of your afternoon with us as well. Um, 
please visit us on our website. I think Roman put that in the chat to sign up for future episodes. And uh, Roman will also include a very quick uh, survey chat. Actually, it's probably already there. So if you take two minutes, we'd really appreciate it. But we thank you all. Thanks so much, William. We appreciate you and uh, love your work. So wonderful to have you here today. And Thanks thank you me. also for being a, a resource for everyone who's here. That's that's beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, everybody. Um, please be well. Take care. Stay safe. Chafee College, Home Edition, Wignall Museum of Contemporary Art. <laughs>